Russia, Russia Gate, you know, was obviously something that ever since Trump pretty much became president, the Democratic Party, the Democratic uh, elites have been obsessing over and they've been just, you know, beating with a dead horse like crazy, still are to this day. Um, they finally figured out or finally found out, I guess, from the Mueller report that Russiagate was nothing and it ended up being just a bunch of bullshit. And this is the, yeah, this is actually a development that happened a while ago, but, you know, I just wanted to talk about it. But I also wanted to kind of link it towards the conversation about impeaching Trump. So <clears throat> there's not, I don't really have much else to say about Russiagate. I'm sick of talking about it. There's not much else to say regarding that um, other than the fact that <clears throat> when you talk about it, there's a difference between there's there's different parts of the whole <clears throat> Russiagate stuff. The the one part one part of it is discussing corrupt uh, co collusion, <clears throat> and then the other part is talking about obstruction. <clears throat> when you're talking about obstruction, what the, the the issue that is discussed is that Trump obstructed. He did an obstruction of justice when it came to not allowing ties, especially financial ties, that he had with Russian or oligarchs in, in you know in, in Russia. So with Russian oligarchs, and he tried to obstruct that stuff because obviously uh, Trump loves his money and he can't get enough of it, and he can't be exposed for any doing anything corrupt or anything sneaky. So he obviously would want to cover that up as much as possible and he obstructed with a lot of the investigations if not all the investigations that went into finding out uh, all the different things that he was doing regarding um regarding his business dealings regarding his whatever you know whatever kind of um financial financial help he got from russia and stuff so he wanted to cover that up. He obstructed that. He didn't want that to go through. I don't disagree with that. I don't think that's a conspiracy theory. I think the biggest conspiracy, the, the big part of the conspiracy theory with Russiagate is the collusion. Collusion has never been proven. The fact that the, the claim that, that Trump colluded with Russia is just, it's completely baseless. There's no, there's absolutely zero evidence of it. And the fact that people want to obsess over this narrative shows that it, it, it's their way of trying to take the, take the blame off of Hillary Clinton being a shitty candidate. And they want to pretend like, oh, well, the only reason Trump won was because of Russia. And he couldn't have done this by himself, so Russia must have been involved. So they go out there and they just blast this fucking russia bullshit constantly russia 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 helped uh, him putin his puppet blah 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 it's obviously hasn't been proven by anything there's tons of evidence to prove that he is not um russia's puppet um kyle kalinsky of secular talk has mentioned multiple times how um We've had situations with Russia where we haven't allowed them to get involved with, in, uh, haven't allowed Russia to be involved in, with uh, in, in oil dealings with um, with Germany, I believe it is, because so I believe Germany, no, so Germany wants to be involved in a in an oil deal with I forgot who it was, I think Exxon Mobil or something, and they want to be involved in, in an oil deal. Germany does with with an with an oil company. America is not allowing Russia. To be involved in that oil deal they want germany to be involved or if anything america wants to be involved but whatever it is they don't want russia to be involved and they don't want they don't want them to get any to, to benefit off that oil deal and there's another situation ha where happened where um there were nato troops that were that were um there were nato troops i think it was in 2017 that were uh lined up on russia's so they were lined up on the, uh, in Ukraine on Russia's border, and they were basically making like a challenge towards towards the Russian government. And I mean, I don't know. Like that's I don't know if if you're a Russia's if you're a Russian puppet or you're a you know you're colluding with the Russian government. Why are you putting NATO troops on the border of of Russia? That just makes no sense. 
and then there was also another situation where I believe there were um, boats. It was either boats or fighter jets that were, yeah, that were um, kind of hovering over the Black Sea near the Russian border, near the uh, uh, Russian uh, kind of the Russian the region that that region right ne right near Russia, and they were um, trying to you know it was almost kind of like a Mexican standoff kind of thing, you know, and similar to like the NATO troops being on, being on, on the Russian border as well. So there's these different things that they have done that they have clearly has it clearly has shown that, uh, that Trump, and this is all Trump's doing. This is not Obama. Obama didn't even want to do those things. Trump did all these things. So if Trump is a puppet of the, of, of this government, of this country, or let alone of the, of the, the, the president, then he's doing a lot of things that are, against that country, against that president, and against that uh, country's, uh, you know, interests. So it's, it's, a lot of that stuff is just bullshit. So the, all this collusion stuff is just, it's just a narrative to pretend the, the, um, that that the Hillary Clinton was not a terrible candidate. The Democratic Party did nothing wrong. That's why they keep bringing up all like, so I'm going to be talking about, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, Julian Assange. Uh, hopefully at some point uh, I'll see if I can you know sneak that into the t into today's episode um, but a lot of times they they are you know they're talking they're railing against you know Julian Assange and they're talking about how you know Assange helped the Russian government release emails from the Hillary Clinton campaign and you know that's why Trump loves Wiki, uh, WikiLeaks so much even though it looks like I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but it looks like Trump is going to end up extraditing, um, uh, uh, extraditing uh, Julian Assange to the United States to have him prosecuted for whatever bullshit shit that bullshit they're going to accuse him of. So, um, but yeah, but so like they want to use every possible excuse and you know obviously hillary's used the excuse of you know russian trolls they just use the excuse of you know jill stein so third parties voting so it's just a every possible fucking thing that you can throw out there the democrats and hillary clinton have done because they don't want to take blame for anything that they've done wrong so that's i mean the whole narrative is just about them just saving their own ass that's all they really care about so but yeah, but but you know, just to just to kind of conclude this part of the segment, collusion is not has never been proven, and it's not going to be proven because it's so hard to prove that the Russian government colluded with a campaign and with a campaign unless you unless you like all all they have is honestly like just a lot of circumstantial evidence. None of this evidence is like oh yeah, there it is. We see them colluding. Or we see them, they, they did something for them, and then, like, that's not there. It's You can't see that. And you can't expose that, and you can't find it. But they they keep trying to push it. And uh, one of the the candidates that's running, uh, that's that's recently run, uh, Eric Swalwell, who, who used to actually be my former, um, he I used to be a constituent of his when I was living in the Bay Area in Pleasanton, California, uh, a few years ago. He was my con he was my, my my representative up there. And this guy is the biggest fucking Russia Gate uh, conspiracy theorist. He thinks still to this point that that Trump is a is a Russian uh, whatever puppet and a Putin puppet and all that stuff. Be uh, even though the Mueller report came out and said there was no collusion, he still believes it. So the guy's insane, and he's running for president now, and he is running on the idea that Trump is a Russian puppet. So his whole agenda is Rush is as Trump is uh, um, Russians Russia's puppet, and he's Rush he's a Russian he's a Russian asset, and yeah, that's how I'm going to win a fucking election by talking about Russia all the time, Russian Russia and Trump the whole time. So the guy's delusional as fuck. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing, but whatever, man, go do do your thing, and you're gonna like you're gonna be out of this primary very very soon. He's gonna embarrass himself. So, um, so you know, finally. Hopefully, uh, if I don't end up getting to Assange in a, in a second, um, I was gonna kind of talk about Assange and free speech and whatnot. But um, I wanted to just kind of quickly segue into impeaching the impeachment of Trump. So there are a lot of people th that are on my side that are going after Nancy Pelosi for actually for actually backtracking, the backtracking on not wanting to impeach Trump anymore. Now, I don't support impeaching trump and i don't mean that on i don't mean that on the grounds of the fact that i don't think he's 
done things wrong. He has violated the emolument clause on several fronts. He has a lot of weird business dealings that, you know, just you can't trust. Like, it's just very, very shady. And you can easily, you can easily um, impeach him on that. My issue is, is that, is that Pelosi, the Democrats, Schumer, all these different people, for the past, what has it been now? year and a half to no two year two two plus years they have been talking about they want to that about how trump has violated all these laws he's uh, done all these unethical things he's done all these things that you know he's breaking the law he needs to be impeached day after day month after month you know year after year for all this time they have been talking about wanting to impeach trump and then all of a sudden what we what what a lot of us said and I think Kyle Kalinske made this point. I think he was one of the, if not one of the first ones, if not the only person to say it, um, that if the Democrats are going to waste their political capital on impeaching Trump, they're not going to have much left to go after him on because they're going to waste everything on impeaching Trump. And then what? You end up getting Mike Pence. So, I mean, if you're going to go out there and get rid of the white supremacist, you know, pro, pro white supremacist, racist, sexist, asshole, you know, you know, emoluments law, you emoluments clause, you know, lawbreaker, then, or whatever, Russian asset, whatever the hell you want to call him, you're going to end up getting the Christian fundamentalist, you know, racist, anti-abortion, you know, fucking, you know, crazy white guy, basically, who, to Pence's credit, <laughs> I mean, to Pence's credit, he's a really nice guy. He's not. He's not a. He's not a blowhard like uh, like um, Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is a. You know, he's a typical blowhard. He's a typical bully. He's a typical shit talker. Mike Pence is not like that. Mike Pence puts a smile on the face on his face, and he makes everything look good, and he makes everything sound good, um, because he's smiling and he's not being an asshole. Of course, his policies are horrible. And he's been in the, he's been governor, he's been in the Congress, I think he was in the Senate, I believe, before he, was he? I think he was. He might have been in the Senate, right? Anyway, whatever it is, he's been in, he's been in, in politics for so long, he was in the Tea Party, he was, he was one of the main, if not, maybe not the founders of the Tea Party, but one of the main people in the Tea Party movement, he was in the Tea Party caucus, and this is a guy that has, has so much clout among Republicans in Congress, whereas Trump is largely not liked by Congress. Now, there are, you know, obviously there's a lot of like members of Congress and Senate that will vote in favor of Trump's policies, but it's it's not like they're going to go out there and declare their love for him. You know, that's the that's kind of the the, the underlying difference between somebody like Mike Pence and somebody like I don't know who's 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 another guy that loves him. Um, who was it like Chris Christie or something or Peter King? I don't know. A bunch of guys, a bunch of guys in the Senate are like upset. What's it? Steve King? I think Steve King definitely likes him. Um, so yeah, so you know, there's a bunch of you know guys that will come out to bat for Trump, but you know, other one, other ones won't. Now, other ones won't. Now, you know, I'm sure Pence would too. Pence, Pence is in the situation where he was chosen as VP. He decided to take that spot because maybe he'll run for president at some point, which is. Don't even get me started on that. But again, if you're going to make that guy president, if you're going to make that guy president after impeaching Trump, then you're going to be in a bigger shithole than you were back then. Because this guy is going to be able to pass a hell of a lot more legislation because he's liked by a lot more people, like I'm saying. That's my whole point. Mike Pence is liked by a hell of a lot more people in Congress than Trump is. So if he wants to go and push anti-abortion legislation, he wants to go push anti um Anti and so anti union, anti worker legislation, he's going to get. It. He's going to want to push anti health care legislation, he's going to get. It. It's like these, like, especially if you have the Congress. Now, Congress obviously is in control of the Democrats, Senate is control of the, in, in control of the Republicans. But it's not, it's not smart to get rid of that guy that's terrible and then put somebody, in my opinion, who's even worse. And you're just going to get like a, a guy that's even craftier and has a nicer smile and sounds a lot better with his nice, you know, you know, sing songy voice, you know, compared to an asshole who's just yelling in the microphone all the time and talking shit like Trump does. So that that narrative of, of, of Trump is just not going to work. My problem, again, like I said before, is that Nancy Pelosi and all these Democrats have been talking about impeaching Trump all this time. And then all of a sudden now they're backtracking. 
because they see exactly what we were all saying all this time. They're seeing that, oh yeah, that's not going to be good. If we end up doing that, then we're not going to have enough political capital to do everything else, especially if we want to get him on, you know, other charges. So, so you know, get him on collusion. Yeah, we know we can't get him there because the Mueller report A doesn't doesn't show it, and A and B there was never proven. There was never evidence of it. It was just it was all circumstantial evidence, which is not enough to get to get you on collusion anyway. But you know, then maybe like if we do him on collusion, if we try to get him on collusion, then we can't get him on on um, obstruction. So maybe they're going to go after obstruction. I don't know. But whether that's going to lead to impeaching Trump, I don't think it's going to happen because that doesn't seem like the Democrats are going to do that. And he would have been stupid to do that from the beginning, like we all said, from the, like progressives and leftists were saying from, a bit from the beginning, because we don't want to get Mike Pence and we don't think it's going to be worth it anyway in the long run. So, I mean, that's what it is. And I don't know. I mean, if people don't want to accept that, you know, then that's then that's kind of their problem. But... And a lot, and guarantee a lot of. I mean, I know a lot of Democrats are definitely banking on the possibility that Democrats will. A lot of the Dem loyalists are going out there and saying, "Yeah, impeach Trump, impeach Trump," because they're obsessed with the idea of impeaching Trump because they want to get out. They want to get at Trump. They want to get rid of Trump because they hate Trump that much. But at the end of the day, you have to think of it. You have to think of it in the long run. You have to think long game. You know, if you think of the short game, yeah, impeach Trump. But then you end up getting pants. You end up not uh, being able to get Trump on anything else, and then that's it. He's gone. And nothing changes. You, if anything, things get worse. So I don't believe in that. I don't think. I know a lot of progressives don't believe in that. And I mean, that's it. Just try and focus on the primary. So it seems like they're doing that. But the fact that you were pushing impeachment from the beginning and now all of a sudden you're not doing it anymore and you've lost interest, it's very peculiar.